Hello, my name is Rob and I'm a registered dietitian in the UK. First and foremost, I wanted to wish everyone a very happy new year. I know 2021 has been quite a mixed year for many, so let's hope for a little more normality in 2022. As I'm sure many of you will have set New Year's resolutions, I wanted to spend some time talking about goal setting. Hopefully some of these tips will help you achieve your goals this year. So what is goal setting? Everyone at some point will have had the desire to make changes in their life. This could be losing weight, improving health, picking up a new skill or spending more time with loved ones. If you're like me, goals are made with the best of intentions at a time of high motivation. However, as the weeks and months go by, our plans can become forgotten, often taking a backseat to life's more pressing matters. So how can we increase our chances of reaching our goals this year? I've spent quite a bit of time thinking about goal setting during my training and practice as a dietitian. This is because a good proportion of some dietitians' work is spent helping people realise and achieve their goals. Here are a few tips I've picked up through training, books and through colleagues that I hope you'll find helpful. For the past six years, I've set aside a small amount of time to complete a yearly review. For the first couple of years, I wrote a small summary of the year's significant events and reflected on how I felt the year had gone. I would then write out a few goals for that year. Getting your thoughts down on paper is a great way to clarify how you are feeling and help you figure out what you want for the future. Over time, my annual review grew into a more structured document after picking up a template from one of my favourite YouTubers, Ali Abdal. I've adapted Ali's template to suit my personal preferences. You can find a copy on my website if you'd like to use it. Link in the description. Before completing a year's review, I'll look back through the previous years to remind myself of the goals I set and the year's highlights. Next comes the review itself. The first section looks back through each of the months of the year and records the highlights. To do this, I will first go through my calendar, picking out the significant events I'd like to record, and then do the same again by going through my photos. This is a really good experience as I don't spend enough time actually looking at the photos, so it's nice to do this. Next comes a short reflection on the stuff I'm grateful for. This section is broken down into categories including people, experiences, accomplishments, products and books. The final part of the review process involves answering a selection of questions. These questions are designed to help get a sense of what has gone well, not so well, what I would like to do more of and what I would like to change. The annual review finishes with some goal setting. First, I'll write out some expectations for what I would love to have achieved by the end of the following year, followed by another list of what I'd like to do within five years. This helps clarify the shorter and longer term aspirations. These can be as big as you want. Remember, even great goals can be broken down into small sequential steps that are easily achieved. The last part of this process involves writing more goals for specific areas in my life. These include hobbies, productivity, health, fitness, nutrition, relationships, finance, career and business. Suppose you'd like to have a go at a yearly review. In that case, I'd encourage you to make categories and questions specific and meaningful to you. Next up, we'll look at how we make goals. Most people have sufficient motivation to enact their goals when starting out, but clarity is often lacking. Using SMART goals helps us be really clear about what we want to achieve. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic and Time Bound. Defining these parameters related to our goal helps us ensure that our objectives are attainable within a specific time frame. This approach eliminates generalities and guesswork, sets a clear timeline and makes it easier to track progress and identify missed milestones. So taking a vague goal of I want to lose weight and giving it the smart treatment, we get I want to lose 10 pounds over the next 10 weeks. This is specific and measurable as I've stated the amount of weight, which is easily measured on the scales. How achievable this is may depend on what other commitments I have going on in my life during this time. This can be assessed by asking oneself if now is an appropriate time to be making changes. If you have a lot of stressful events coming up, the answer may be no and that's okay. If the answer is yes, then go right ahead. 
This goal is well within the realistic healthy weight loss range of one to two pounds per week and has a clearly defined time frame of 10 weeks, making it smart. Remember to write down your goals as part of your yearly review or any time you've decided to do some goal setting, you are much more likely to do them and this will help you with reflection, which we'll talk about later. Clearly understanding what knowledge or skills we need to develop to reach our goals is an essential part of the process. Completing an importance and confidence scale can help you direct your efforts if you are unsure of what to do. When considering a goal or change, you want to ask yourself the following two questions. Firstly, how important is this goal to you? Answer using a scale from 0 to 10. Ideally, anything we will spend time and effort on will be at least a 5. It may also be helpful to think about why it's important to you. For example, is the goal based on something you want for yourself? Or is it because of something someone else has said? The second question involves asking, how confident am I in achieving this goal? Again, score yourself from 0 to 10. Now consider why this number isn't lower. For example, with a goal of weight loss, your answer might be, well, it's not a 3, it's a 5 because I've done it before and I know I could do it again. Finally, ask what needs to happen to increase that confidence number. Your answer to this question will be a guide for moving closer to your goal. In this case, it could be, well, it would go from a 5 to 7 if I knew how to prepare healthy meals at home really easily. So that's what you need to do. Although having a clear goal is helpful, focusing on the destination doesn't actually help us get there. Smart goals help us set our direction or align our compass. They show us which path we need to go and take. However, our day-to-day -day habits are what will move us closer to our goals. Many of our day-to-day -day habits are an unconscious result of our life's experiences. All of us will have many that help us get through life. Habits tend to be isolated decisions that we repeatedly make for ourselves. In my case, I get up every morning and make porridge without thinking about it. Ultimately, our habits decide if we move closer to or further from our goals. But unfortunately, it can be all too easy to go about life not actively considering if our actions are taking us in the desired direction. This is why it is essential to have a conscious awareness of our goals and habits. We can do this by periodically reflecting on our habits and if they align with our SMART goals. For each SMART goal, try breaking it down into some habits that will move you closer to achieving it. For example, if losing weight is a goal, the habit could be eating a healthy breakfast each morning. Tracking habits is a simple way to measure if you did the habit or not. This process keeps you honest, as we don't recall our own behaviours very well. This can also be motivational, as we can see our progress. You could put a cross on a calendar as a straightforward option. I quite like to add reminders to my phone and then mark them off once I've completed my habit. Don't worry about how well you are performing, just focus on not breaking your habit streak. Successful people don't fail less, but they do quickly get back to their habits. Get back into the habit, even if it is performed poorly. Something is better than nothing. Also, try and focus on consistency first, and then once you are performing consistently, you can focus on quality. Tracking can seem like a burden, especially when starting a new habit, as we have to focus on the new habit and tracking. Ideally, try and use something automated for tracking, like uh, steps can be recorded by your watch, or your bank statement could be recording how often you're eating out. Setting all of these goals and habits may be helpful, but it is essential to periodically review your progress by either revisiting your yearly review or looking through your habit tracker, be it a diary, calendar or app. The final part of the process is called reflection. Reflection is a skill I was encouraged to develop during my time at university. All health professionals are taught to become reflective practitioners. This means periodically looking back at the skills and knowledge we have developed and assessing if we need to develop further on what new skills we should be working on. This is especially important within dietetics in which the evidence base is constantly growing. Personally, I like to review my goals and habits every quarter and write a small summary about my progress so far. The key message here is to not feel bad if you have made little or no progress. Remember, this is simply a data point to say that what you are currently doing isn't working, hence we need to try something different. 
This may mean developing different habits to help us move forward or reassessing if our goals have changed and need to be updated. Finally, don't forget to review your progress again in subsequent end of year reviews where you can look back and see which goals you've reached or which ones you've taken a step closer to. So to end, I thought I'd share one of my goals for the year and that's to increase the quality and consistency of my YouTube videos with the hope of reaching a thousand subscribers by the end of 2022. Hopefully by using smart goals, habits and reflection, I can give myself the best chance of getting there. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you found this video helpful or informative. And if you did, why not give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And before I go, this is your weekly reminder to never stop learning because life never stops teaching. See you in the next one. Cheerio.